Hey, it's me, Destin. Welcome back to Smarter Every Day. I want to be an astronaut, so I love taking tours of the International Space Station online. But there's a problem. Every time I do this, I can't get my bearings. It's like, without gravity, my main reference frame has been stolen from me, and I can't tell up from down, and I get turned around, and I'm just confused. Scott Kelly just took command of the International Space Station as part of his one-year tour, but before he left, he took just a couple of minutes to walk me around one-on-one -on -one inside the mock-up in Houston. Immediately after taking this tour with Scott Kelly, I now know the International Space Station to a whole new level. I know where I am in relation to where they sleep, or where they draw blood, or get ready for spacewalks, or where they poop, or where they store the experiments. I, I know all that stuff now just from seeing a video on the space station and I really enjoy it. I'm going to take you on the exact same tour that I took with Scott, only I've made it better. In the bottom left part of the screen, I'm going to include a video game style radar so that you know exactly what module you're in, what your position is, and what your orientation is. You're going to be the white dot and Scott Kelly is the red dot. In the bottom right hand part of the screen, I'm going to add annotation links here so that if at any point you want to go up on orbit and see what it's like in orbit, you can do that. Just click the annotation. I'll also leave links in the video description. Okay, you ready? The International Space Station is big, so try not to fast forward. If you can watch this whole thing at one go, you won't get disoriented. We're going to start exactly where Scott Kelly's spacecraft docked to the ISS, and we're going to let him walk us all the way through to the Japanese module. Let's get smarter every day. Okay, we're in the ISS. This is where you dock. Yeah, so uh, this is uh, the Russian segment and a uh, much higher fidelity mock-up in Russia. But there's a module that comes out of the top of the space station here called MRM-2. My Soyuz, Soyuz will dock to that. The other Soyuzes are docked in other parts of the Russian segment. Got the service module down here. This is the FGB. It's a Russian-built module, but the United States owns it. It's mostly for uh, cargo stowage. It's a lot of carpet. Is that a fire hazard? Uh, yeah, this is like for Velcro and stuff. But uh, Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Great. But... Uh, yeah, we're walking from the aft part of the space station forward, and there is the front part of the Russian segment, or we'll be going into the U.S. segment. We'll go outside first. So we're going into, is it Unity is the first module? Yeah, Node 1. Okay. You know, it's interesting, the crew members don't really refer to them by those names like Unity and Destiny. We'll say Node 1. Got it. And uh, the laboratory module, but this is Node 1. This is kind of a... As the name describes, it's an adjoining module for other things, but this is kind of where the crew members on the U.S. segment eat, and the Russians will eat here sometimes. We'll have a galley rack here to fill your drink bags, little refrigerator things, uh, food warmers. Got it. Over there is node three, very important. For, That's where the cupola is, right? Yeah, the cupola's in there. We can run in there real quick. Yeah. This is where you're going to take all the uh, photos that you're going to send back to us, right? Yeah, a lot of them we take them from here. There's also a, a window in the U.S. lab module that's pretty good, and the Russians have some good windows for Earth observations, but cupola is down here, so there'll be the Earth. This is our exercise device or low-fidelity mock-up of it for you know, resistive exercise. I just realized the bathroom is right beside the cupola. Yeah, so the cupola, this exercise device, the toilet on the U.S. segment, and our treadmill are all within a few feet of one another, and they're all at different orientations. So someone running on the wall, someone using the bathroom this orientation, and sideways on the A-Red makes for a pretty interesting picture. Yeah, so, so one thing I didn't realize is that when we're taking these beautiful images of Earth that people on Earth can relate to so well, you're probably smelling what just went down over here. Yeah, it's not that smelly. That's good, that's good. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. So this is this sounds like the most fun segment. Yeah, is it? this module is very important. It's also important because it's got a lot of the uh, life support systems in here. Uh, oxygen generating system that uh, converts water into oxygen right. on, on the U.S. segment. Um, it has the, the processor that converts our, uh, our urine into water. It also has a... Uh, our, our, our carbon, one of our carbon uh, dioxide removal assemblies, which uh, kind of filters the carbon dioxide. Do you guys still use lithium hydroxide? And we do that as a backup. So if, if this, these two things, the one in here and the one in the lab, similar uh, piece of hardware, if they didn't work, eventually we'd have to use lithium hydroxide 
the Russian segment has a Vazdu, but that can't support six people. Got it. So at some point you'd be using the lithium hydroxide canister. Sweet. Hopefully we just get it fixed. Good deal. Through this little hole here, the hatch is closed, but someone had probably had training there. That would be the airlock where uh, we would do U.S. spacewalks from. Got it. And then go into the U.S. laboratory module. I noticed I noticed that node right there has it seems like the most space, the most it's most spacious. Yeah. You can move around. You know, in, in in space though, we have a lot more hardware in here. Got it. Than than we do in the um, in these mock-ups. But this is the U.S. laboratory module. Also has some life support equipment inside. Um, it's kind of like the main module of the space station, kind of like the bridge of the ship, if you could have Got it. Uh, that kind of analogy. We could fly the robot arm from here. I'll also fly it in the cupola. Then we have a lot of science racks. So we do a lot of the U.S. science in here. Glove box. Um, we have a minus uh, 80 degree laboratory freezer. We have three of these on board, but these are for some of our that's, science. That's samples. where you like snip off pizza, pieces of yourself and stick them in there kind of thing, right? Yeah, there's uh, human samples go in there. Other science samples. Um, the other two of these are in the Japanese module. This is where Robonaut lives. Got it. Um, and then as we go into, still going further forward, we have node two. This is where a lot of our visiting vehicles dock. The shuttle docked forward. The HTV or uh, our Cygnus or uh, SpaceX Dragon vehicle docked to the bottom or the top. It's also where our um, forward and top will be where the U.S. crewed vehicles will be at some point. We live in here. We sleep in here. So three of the crew members yep. sleep in uh, the U.S. Um, or four of the crew members sleep in the U.S. segment. The three you'll US have one here as well, right? Yeah, the coffin is on the floor. We call it nice. When you float by, it looks like someone's sleeping in the coffin. If you want to get in there, I'll film you in there. Oh, sure. So this is—is is this going to be your bunk? Uh, actually, it is. So I'll be in the port side. It's pretty spacious. Yeah, it is. It's pretty good. I noticed there's some sound dampening in here as well. Can I, can I see this real yep, quick? Absolutely. So is this, uh, I assume this one Ethernet jack is your connection to the ground? You have two, you'll have two computers in here. Um, uh, it provides power and, and data. So you'll have a, uh, a, what's called a CSL laptop that gives you some kind of intermittent uh, internet connectivity and also a uh, another another computer that where you have your email and other applications that you use but you'll have a lot of personal items in here your sleeping bag be on the wall so you kind of sleep in here floating right. it's actually not bad you know when in micro gravity it's not a bad bedroom yeah it's it, it actually sounds kind of cozy yeah i like the sound dampening so going further forward the columbus module which is the isa science module so we do a lot of science in here also have some stowage in this module. This module is unique on the space station. Am I allowed to walk in here? Absolutely. I've noticed you've got, uh, you'll have racks on the, the ground and the ceiling. So. Yeah, we utilize all the space. Um, so a lot of science racks, a lot of our human research is done in here. We draw a lot of the blood samples in here. Uh, ultrasounds are done in here. Here's a mock-up of the, actually it's a picture, not really a mock-up of you know, where our ultrasound hardware is hooked into. Uh, we have a centrifuge for uh, centrifuging our, our blood. Yeah. Before we put it in the freezer. We have some other, you know, gas analyzers and systems that provide certain um, gas compositions for some of the experiments. Real quick, dumb question. When you're looking back, that's that's the JAXA Kibo yes. node in front of us, right? Yep. So when you're looking down here after you've been spinning around and here doing science, how do you orient yourself? There is no down, so do you think along the axis of the space station? Does that become your datum? Most of the modules are kind of oriented in the same way. Um, I, I notice the words. Lights, the words always yeah. point a certain way. So usually the lights are on top and the labels are in kind of this orientation. So you generally live in this kind of, this is the floor and this is the ceiling based on the lighting and, and how the labels are written. However, in some modules, like the PMM, it's clocked differently, so you go in there, you got to spin around. Um, takes a little while for your gyro to cage, but right. uh, yeah, you know, people are used to lighting from above, so it's really generally the lighting that uh, 
describes or, or sets the orientation. Yeah, so it's a little haptic clues. I don't even know if that's the word, but I know what you're saying. So this is Jax that we're going into? Yeah, so this is the JPN, the Japanese pressurized module. Um, one of the other, you know, science modules we have. Do a lot of science in here as well. Um, you know, different science racks. This isn't really a good mock-up of, of the how this looks on the inside. We don't, when we have our science training, we generally don't do it in here. We have right. a facility that'll have a, uh, almost a fully functional uh, mock-up of the science rack we have, so. Got it. This is just more for so, like emergency. So these, these racks are modu modular, right? You can just pop them out? Yeah, we can move them in and out, bring them up on, uh, on HTV or some of the other cargo vehicles. Um, Got it. Well, cool. And, and as we go further forward, the Japanese, um, part of the space station has a robot arm. We have an exposed facility outside that allows us to do, you know, move science payloads. That's the back porch, isn't it? The porch, the side porch. Oh, is it? Gotcha. And then they have an airlock. We can also move stuff in and out. You can't put people in here, but you can put hardware in here to get it uh, in and out of the space station. That's nice. And then a big closet up uh, overhead. That's just where you throw all the junk. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time. I know you've oh, got yeah. to go, go to Russia. Yep. And uh, my pleasure. Be safe Let's and walk uh, up this way, and we can walk around. Sure. All right. So I'm Destin. Uh, you're getting smarter every day. Thank you very much for Scott Kelly's time. You're like a national asset at this point, so it's a big <laughs> deal that we got this tour. So have a good one. Bye. So there you go. Anytime from now on you see a video from the International Space Station, I hope you know where you are in relation to where everything else on station is. It's really cool. I enjoy it. I really hope you do too. I want to say thank you to the patrons who support Smarter Every Day on Patreon. In this particular video, not only did you pay for my flight out there, but that little radar thing in the bottom corner, you made that happen. It's really complicated. We had to motion track my camera position relative to a wireframe of the space station for every single second of the video. There's no way I could have done that on my own and you patrons made that happen. So if you're interested in supporting cool stuff like that in the future, patreon.com slash smarter every day. I'll leave a link in the video description. I hope this added value to your life. If so, please consider subscribing. If that ain't your thing, no big deal. I'm Destin. You're getting smarter every day. Have a good one. Are there reaction wheels on station? Yes. No, well, not reaction wheels. Control you know, moment gyros. Control moment gyros. And only Did we just a become best friends? would know the difference. <laughs> Did we just become best friends? We, we just became best friends. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and there's and the neat thing is, once you become this level of best friends, now you can sit and talk about the advantages and disadvantages of reaction reels versus control moment gyros. After karate in the garage, of course, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. I just I just so, had that conversation with Don Pettit. Okay.